So guys, so you guys probably already know this, but in the midst of this pandemic, computer component prices are not ideal. Processors, motherboards, power supplies especially are low in stock and resellers have absolutely no problem upcharging by like 50% on some of the lower priced items. This time last year, AMD's Ryzen CPUs were affordable and the best option if you wanted to build a brand new gaming computer for 500 bucks or less. Sadly, those components are back up in price and in case you do find them around their MSRP, they go out of stock very, very quickly. So the question is, what's left for more frugal buyers? Is there anything left? And the answer is, yeah, quite a lot. One, you can still go the brand new route and pick yourself up a Ryzen APU build, something like a 3200G that's still very viable today. If you wanna go used and you want a more simple approach, you can pick up a pre-built, pop in something like a GTX 1650 or 1650 Super and have yourself a modest computer for like 300 or so dollars. By the way, video on that coming out soon, so be on the lookout. But I want to introduce you to this new-ish, new-ish, not, not really new, but a new competitor and the processor only costs $15. So here it is, the $15 AMD Ryzen alternative that you can buy right now. And the winner of most likely to get hacked because he uses the same password is... Oztox. Oh my goodness. Wow, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. Wow. Thank you all so much. This is such a heartwarming award to think that you guys believe that I have the least security on my online accounts. It means the world, God bless. Guys, I have something to admit. My online presence has been extremely insecure. Seriously though, 15 years ago, I could get away with using the same password variations on all of my accounts online, but that's not really the case anymore. Ever since using password managers like Dashlane, my security and sanity have been in check. Dashlane manages your sensitive personal info like passwords, credit cards, and addresses, and syncs it across all your devices. They also generate super strong Chad-like passwords and store the encrypted passwords in a manager so you don't have to worry about remembering them. This also means you don't need to remember your credentials when buying products online. Dashlane has a simple two-step checkout that lets you order whatever you want in a few seconds. If you want even more security, they offer extra features like a VPN that other password managers just don't have. That way, you can browse certain websites without being tracked. I know all of you use Kiss Anime from time to time. You can't fool me. So if you're using the same five passwords, then it's time for a change. Get Dashlane on your first device for free by heading over to dashlane.com forward slash oztalks. Use code oztalks for 25% off. All right, back to the video. These are Intel Xeons, specifically the ones that work on the X79 and X99 platform. For those who don't know, X79 and X99 were Intel's top of the line platforms back in the day. They're analogous to the same platform that's used for AMD's Threadripper. They range from four to 12 cores. They go from Sandy Bridge all the way up to Haswell architecture. And because they're fairly old, you can pick them for low prices. As a matter of fact, you can find X79 bundles on AliExpress for as low as 64 US dollars. I did order two bundles from AliExpress, but it takes about a month for the components to arrive. In the meantime, I recommend checking out Brian from Tech yes City, Phil from Phil's Computer Lab, and Jeff from Crafts Computing. They have awesome content on all of these X79 and X99 deals that you can find, and it'll hold you over until at least my stuff comes in if you want to come back and check it out, but you don't have to. I already have an X79 motherboard and the Xeon from a previous project, but I also ordered this Xeon E5 2640 for about 19 bucks before shipping on eBay. They go as low as like 15 bucks though. So if you look hard enough, you can find it for a bit cheaper. It's six cores, 12 threads with a 2.8 gigahertz all core boost. And I'm extremely excited to take a look.
I just want to say that this platform is... <laughs> It's a bit weird. <laughs> the motherboards that you buy from AliExpress are very basic and have very limited overclocking options. They actually use recyclable parts, which I personally think is cool because sustainability. And that gives them modern features like USB 3.0 front panel headers and M.2 slots when the original platform didn't support those. As a matter of fact, some boards are so funky that they have both DDR3 and DDR4 slots. So yeah, they're not like other motherboards. They're quirky. The board I have here is a little bit different. It's the HP Z420 OEM motherboard, and it works fine with most Xeon processors on the LGA2011 socket. There are some proprietary parts like the ATX power connector and the CPU fan header, but with just a few adapters, I can get all of that working fine. Even if you don't go with an AliExpress bundle, a 2640 HP motherboard, 16 gigs of RAM, and the necessary adapters will set you back about 126 bucks before tax. That's pretty good. Now for only 100 bucks more though, you can get something like a Ryzen 3 3100 processor and go on that platform. And for about double the price of the Xeon platform, you can get a 2600, which has the same number of cords, higher clock speed, faster and newer architecture, and of course it's on a modern and supported platform. So the question here today is whether or not Ryzen is worth double the platform price. Computers are doing more each and every generation. What I wanna do is measure the total performance of each platform from the gaming to the editing to the streaming and see whether or not this is a platform that you guys should invest in. The test bench for the Xeons is the HP Z420 motherboard, 16 gigs of DDR3 ECC memory at 1333 in a 2x8 fashion, a Vega 56 reference, a 120 gig SSD, and a 1 terabyte 7200 RPM hard drive. The Vega 56 is probably the fastest card you would pair with this platform, so I think that choice worked out well. All right, let's see the performance. So the benchmarks are done. What are my thoughts? I don't think the Xeons are a bad choice, but even with the rise in price hike, they could be a tough sell. And I'll explain that a little bit more later. For now, let's talk about the good things. First of all, price. If you want lots of cores at a cheap price, then the X79 and X99 platform will do that for you. And if you live outside of the United States where the good prices aren't available, then this could be an even better purchase. And that's a great segue into the second and final biggest pro is the availability. I don't talk about this too much on the channel, but when I do, I really like to harp on it. There are people that live outside of the USA. The X79 and X99 platform are shipped through AliExpress, which is more readily accessible than the deals that we might find on eBay or Newegg here in America. The markets in countries outside of the USA too is very different. And so a lot of times new components are pretty pricey, Ryzen included. So this could be a great option for someone who just really wants to game, who wants playable performance, and they want it right now for a cheap price. 
So if that's you, I whipped up a super quick and dirty 320-ish dollar build using these Xeons. Link for that will be in the description. And as with anything, there are downsides. Let's talk about them. First of all, it's a used platform. And whenever you're going used, you do lose some security. You don't have a warranty and your longevity is definitely not up to the same caliber as new parts. Thankfully, CPUs, motherboards, and RAM usually live a long time, so don't worry about your components dying on you anytime soon if you choose to go this route. Secondly, these Xeons have a lower clock speed and an older architecture. Even in Shadow of the Tomb Raider, a game that's known to scale well with more CPU cores, the 3100 was about 70% faster than the 2640 in each CPU average category. Now it's not the difference between unplayable and playable, but it does show you that the bottleneck lies in the platform. And this is honestly where the X99 platform comes in. It has higher frequency and has well IPC, which isn't too far off from Zen 2. Speaking of X99, we have our third point, which is the upgrade path. The X99 platform actually has a decent upgrade path. You can go up to 12 Haswell cores that are modestly clocked, but that still doesn't beat the upgrade path that Zen has. It has one of the best upgrade paths that we've seen in like the last decade. And lastly, we have the price, which might sound a little bit counterintuitive because it was a pro, but it can also be seen as a con here. The dollar per frame chart shows the value of each platform, so CPU, motherboard, RAM, and cooler at their current price. The 3100 is pretty close to the Xeons. If you can find the 3100 at its MSRP of only 100 bucks, it's dangerously close. For only like 130 bucks more right now, you can upgrade to four cores and eight threads on Zen 2. I understand that there is a time value of money, so if you can get that 130 bucks within the next month or so, I totally think that you should just skip this Xeon platform and go straight to a modern Zen 2 platform. But of course, that's something that you have to decide on. You know your finances the best, so make the best decision that works for your needs. The entire point of this video and a lot of my videos on my channel is to present you guys with options, information, and hope that you make the best decision for whatever is happening in your life at the time. You don't need to spend a lot of money to enjoy playing video games, to stream, to make whatever content you want. You just have to be a little bit smart and know where to look. With that being said, I know there are a lot of CPU and motherboard options and it can be a little bit daunting for a first time user. So here are my recommendations if you are going to go for the X79 or X99 platform. For the X79, the minimum you want is the E5 2640 with the 1650 for the best gaming experience and the 2689 for all around the most versatile. For the X99 platform, get a 2620 V3 at the minimum and the 2678 V3 for enthusiasts on a budget. I absolutely love that term. I don't know why. <laughs> I'll have links for all of these in the description below so you don't have to go searching for them. So that's it for this video, guys. If you guys enjoyed it, then make sure you leave a like. If you loved it, share, subscribe, all that kind of stuff. Let me know if you are actually gonna go through and pick up one of these Xeons. I'm actually very interested. Now, before I go, there is something that I wanna share with you guys. One of my cousins started this new clothing line called... It's pretty cool, right? Their entire brand, their entire slogan is storytelling threads. So being able to tell perspectives through clothing. If you guys know me, then you know that I love stories. I love hearing other people's stories and perspectives. And that's one of the reasons why I started the channel in the first place. The front of the shirt is very simple, but on the back, it has the fight for COVID-19 sign and logo and everything on it, which I really like. I think it's really cool and it's very relevant to what's happening today. So if you guys are interested in supporting and picking up one of these shirts, then you can go to the website, link will be in the description, and you can use my code, Ozzy, O-Z-I, and it'll drop the price from, I think, $27 down to $19. If you guys do order one, make sure you tag me on Instagram, on Twitter, or just hit me up on Discord. Dang it, this thunder is getting out of hand. Gosh. Oh my gosh.
Anyway, I think God is trying to tell me I should end the video. So let me do that. <laughs> Follow me on all my socials at OzTalksHW on literally everything, including TikTok. I made a TikTok, so hit me up on there too. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.